In this short video, I'm going to talk to you about how you can progress your plyometric training in order to develop greater power for your long and triple jump and sprints. There's a huge variety of plyometric exercises that you can do and by careful selection of these you can bring your training to higher level. But before we go into this let's take a quick look at what a plyometric exercise is. When you land from a jump or when you're sprinting for that matter the muscles of the ankle, knee and hip will go on stretch they'll perform what's known as an eccentric muscular action. There'll then be a brief pause when the muscles recoil and they perform what's known as a concentric muscular action where the muscles shorten. It's in these milliseconds that a huge amount of stored elastic energy will be produced. So having briefly understood how plyometrics work, Let's take a look at the various variations that you can use. Now basically, the main issue with a plyometric exercise is the time you're going to spend on the ground whilst converting from the eccentric to the concentric action. More intense exercises can often require greater loading and therefore potentially greater dwelling times on the ground if you're not suitably conditioned. The key whatever the intensity of the plyometric exercise is to move as quickly as you can from the concentric to the eccentric phase. You're looking at about 130 milliseconds for the ground contact for a bound. This contrasts with about 110 milliseconds for the board contact for the long jump and for sprinting times of under 100 milliseconds are possible. Circa 0.089 milliseconds for example. So you can begin to see there's a specificity with which bounding you do. You'll have probably heard in previous videos that I've suggested that long jumpers do different plyometric exercises to triple jumpers. This is because of the amount of time the different jumping events require force to be generated on the ground contact. And of course the triple jump requires three consecutive jumps and there's a loss of speed on each of those three contacts. Thus, the ground contact for the jump phase will be less than that of the hop. Also, the way the foot strikes the ground for the triple jumper will be different to that of the long jumper when they're specifically undertaking their takeoffs. So therefore, it makes sense to train specifically, plyometrically, for the requirements of the long and the triple jump. Potentially, the most intense of all the plyometric exercises are those that are performed with a relatively long run-up and therefore require a lot more speed and force to be overcome on each contact. Now, the longer the approach and the fewer the contacts, the more intense the exercise is going to be this is because with a higher initial velocity at the first takeoff, there's going to be greater speed throughout the subsequent two, three, or potentially four other contacts. And therefore, as I've indicated, greater landing forces need to be absorbed and converted into forwards momentum. You've just seen Jonathan do two hops, a bound, and a jump. And this is the type of plyometric exercise that will start to include as the indoor or the outdoor season starts to close in. We progress to these with different loads of plyometrics prior. A plyometric combination such as two hops, a bound and a jump very closely mirrors the combination of the hop, step and jump required for the triple jump and by utilising the run up for the former and then transferring to the triple jump there's going to be a greater transference of the qualities developed and therefore there should be greater ease with actual triple jumping. As you can see, Jonathan has adapted well from the previous plyometric training to his triple jump, in this case off of a short approach and this was incidentally his first session of this season. 
I also talk in my videos and through my writing about seamless transitions. So by layering the different types of plyometric exercises available to you and your event, you can bring yourself closer and closer to competition readiness without there being a jolt, as it were, to your training and to your system so that you can cope with the speed and the power required. Performing plyometrics off of low platforms with a run-on is perhaps the most intense form that you can utilise and we'll introduce these as a further step in the development towards the indoor or the outdoor season as the case may be. A way to progress towards these or one way as there are a number is to utilise standing start platform hops or bounds and you can see that the guys are not finding these that easy as they do require quite a lot of force to be overcome and hopping of course provides more of a stress than for example a bound. Another aspect to consider when looking at progressing plyometric training are the joint angles involved. Now for certain plyometrics you can use a joint angle at the knee or the hip for example that's not going to be the same as that that's required for your event. This is particularly the case with standing start bounding. As you can see the push off from the start requires a totally different position to the hop or the bound than what would be required if a run on was being used and the actual event performed itself let alone the fact that a lot less speed is going to be required. As well as joint angles, there's the way that the tendons store and return energy. Now near straight leg contacts are going to utilise more of this tendon capacity than those that have greater degrees of knee flexion or knee bend. So these straight leg hops, for example, across the platforms are designed to get the tendons push to power the movement and they add another element of training plyometrics. Now yet another element is to introduce the isometric stroke eccentric contact aspect of the jump where there's a block on the landing. Now why would you want to do that? Well as I've indicated earlier when the foot strikes the board for example in the long jump there's going to be a slight breaking between the eccentric and the concentric actions as the jumper powers off the board. So if you can stop more powerfully, you're going to get a greater return concentrically. You can see a number of variations of these exercises being performed on screen now. As a general rule, any exercise performed on one leg is more intense than an exercise performed using two. Now you can also add weights to your plyometric and jump training, however we don't actually do a lot of this as I believe that overly loading the body when doing plyometrics can lead to slower contact times. So why is Paul doing this exercise? Well in reality it's not actually a plyometric exercise, it's a concentric one rather similar to a heavy loaded squat in that he's pausing between each jump. The pause, should it be long enough, will turn off the stretch reflex and therefore the muscles will have to more or less solely shorten in order to create the jump, i.e. perform a concentric action. So we do do these exercises but they're aimed more at developing acceleration. That's the ability of the body to overcome resistance and to move itself from zero momentum to speed quickly and this type of strength can boost the quicker rate of force development plyometric strength. You've also got lateral plyometrics that can be done in order to bolster sideways strength which can help when you come to produce force when you're jumping i.e. that no movements will be wasted or no major movement will be wasted in a lateral direction. They'll also shore up your joints in order to prevent injury or at least reduce the chances of injury. It's also important to acknowledge that takeoff drills and sprint drills are also plyometric and therefore they're going to have a transference into your performance and they should dovetail into the rest of your 
quote-unquote plyometric training in order to bring about specific and required changes to improve your jumping and sprinting. Eagle-eyed amongst you will note that I've not talked about drop jumps specifically and I'm going to save that as a topic for a future video as they, to me, are one of the cornerstones of a long jumper and triple jumpers training and therefore require separate analysis.